We're here in the Piazza della Repubblica, and this is the space where the history of Florence begins and ends. This was where, 2,000 years ago, the Romans built their forum when they founded a city that they called Florencia. And a forum space in a Roman city was where all the major political and social economic buildings were concentrated. And a forum was always located in the exact center of a Roman city. Now, the fate of the Roman city of Florence was tied into the fate of Rome. And when the empire fell in the fifth century after Christ, the city of Florencia was abandoned. And for about 500 years or so, it was essentially uninhabited. And then around the year 1000, there was the rebirth of the city in Europe. And people began to migrate back in from the surrounding countryside. And they decided to take advantage of this large open plot of land that had once been the Roman Forum to build a market. Right now, a market is one of the most important aspects of any thriving city. And that market continued to function here for approximately a thousand years, okay, all the way up until the most recent important date in Italian history, which is the year 1861, the year in which Italy was unified. And when Italy was unified, one of the most pressing questions was where to set up a capital. Rome, of course, was the logical location, but the Pope in Rome did not want to become part of this new country. So the decision was made to choose another Italian city that was very conveniently located about halfway down the peninsula. That city was called Florence. So between the years 1865 and 1870, Florence became the capital of the new country of Italy. The problem was is that most of the city was characterized by medieval architecture. So what they decided to do was to come back into the area where the history of Florence began, to knock down all the medieval buildings that were once located here, and to rebuild them in what we call the neoclassical style. In fact, I don't want you to make the same mistake that most people make when they come to Florence and they look at these buildings and they say it's amazing that they're in such good shape considering how old they are. Because in fact these buildings are only about 130 years old. And it doesn't take me to tell you that these are 19th century buildings, because if you look right up there behind me above that arch, you'll see a plaque with Roman numeral dates. Now consider that in the US, we think of course that the only practical application for Roman numerals is Super Bowls. But believe it or not, in Europe, almost all dates are in fact given in Roman numerals. And if you read the date there, you'll see that in fact, the plaque reads 1895, that a majority of this architecture was completed at the end of the 19th century. And even more poetically, above the date, you'll see that plaque with three lines, right? And those lines essentially telling you in three verses what it just took me about eight minutes to tell you. That is the entire history of the square. It reads, L'antico centro della città, or the ancient center of the city, referring to the forum. Da secolare squalore, or from centuries of squalor, meaning the decay of the market that was here. A vita nuova restituita, or to new life restored. This climactic ending, essentially the 19th century ramping of the space, which brought it back to its former ancient glory. Which is why I think this is the best place to introduce Florence, because we've just actually covered about 2,000 years of history and we haven't moved an inch.